Of course, he was recently acquitted of double murder. He was not on a suicide watch. And I know hindsight's 2020, but Leslie, should he have been more closely monitored by the corrections officers in the prison? Um, personally, I think he should have been more closely monitored by the mental health staff in the prison. Um, I don't think it's corrections officers duty. They're certainly not trained. They're not clinicians to look for signs of, of depression or other um, possibilities for self-harm. But even the monitoring has to be careful because it's very easy to walk by someone's cell and say, how are you doing? And they'll say, okay, or fine, or I'll be okay. But what I wish had happened to Mr. Hernandez and for others convicted of first-degree murder is some intensive counseling around coping with the fact that you are likely to spend the rest of your natural life um, in prison. And I believe he was 25 when he was convicted of a you know, very tender age, a young age. So I don't know that that happened, but I seriously doubt it. It's not typically part of the programming. Um, if you come in with a diagnosed mental illness or you clearly have a mental illness, you ask to see mental health. Um, sometimes you're denied. They think you're faking. So the, the thought of having someone he could talk to on a regular basis um, to cope with this issue could have been very helpful to him. Okay, let me just follow up on that. So you believe in your professional opinion that Hernandez, because there was no issues of mental health, at least publicly or in any of his trials, that was not a factor, that he would not have had access to any services? That's likely. I don't know that that's the case, but that's typically what would happen.